guys, it's Whitney. Welcome to my bathroom. If you're new here, welcome. I help you DIY a cozy home. Now today, I wanted to talk about how I renovated this bathroom because this house is a 150 year old farmhouse that needed a lot of love when I got it. So I'm gonna show you a few of the things that I've done in here if you're looking to renovate your bathroom. And I'm also gonna show you this awesome DIY vanity that I made out of some reclaimed wood. If you like videos like this, please give it a big thumbs up and subscribe. I would love to have you here. Join my little DIY family. We do thrift flips, home renovations, home product review, all things to help you spend your dollars wisely and make a cozy home. Okay, let's get into some of the stuff I did in here. The first major renovation I did in here was this wallpaper because the wallpaper that was in here was disgusting. I'm gonna show you how easy it is to remove old, disgusting wallpaper. It's off. Now this print is called Twill. This is a black and cream Twill print wallpaper that I got off of Amazon. I'm not sure if they are still selling it, but I will have it linked in my Amazon storefront if you want to get something like this. So Wayne's coating is when a portion of the bottom part of the wall is covered in either paneling or some sort of wood detail or tile. So this goes up to just about chest height on me. So this is called a beadboard. Now there are different widths of beadboard that you can get. This is pretty standard. There's one that's about three inches, which is also really standard as well. So this beadboard is MDF, as well as the matching chair rail and baseboard that go with this. Now, if you're gonna be using beadboard in any areas that is pretty moisture prone, like a bathroom, don't use the MDF, because MDF is basically mold food. This bathroom does not have a shower, it's just a half bath, so it's okay in here. But if you were gonna do beadboard in a full bath that has a shower with a lot of moisture, I would stick with the wood beadboard, not the MDF. So this part up here is called a chair rail, and then obviously we all know what baseboards are. But this chair rail and baseboard comes in a set together of eight foot sections. Right underneath here on the chair rail and right at the top of the baseboard, there's a little rabbit cut out, like a little, little tiny notch that your beadboard sits in. So this is a really great option if you were looking to get a matching chair rail and baseboard that already had the rabbit cut into it. You literally put the baseboard on, slide your paneling in, put the chair rail in and nail it all to the wall. Bada bing, super easy. When I was demoing this bathroom, this mirror was here and mirrors are expensive so I wanted to repurpose it. So I just left it glued to the wall and then I made a little frame for it out of some old stockade fencing that was just left over in the backyard. So I ripped it down, cut my little 45 degree miter cuts and glued it on top. Now the thing I am most proud of in this bathroom is this DIY vanity I made out of some reclaimed wood. Super easy, am I profesh? No, but I just wanna encourage you guys to just try it. Just make some stuff, figure it out. If it doesn't work, it can always be fixed. For this vanity, I used four by fours as the legs, used some reclaimed one by sixes as the apron, reclaimed one by sixes for the bottom shelf. Now I like the way that it is still rustic, it's not playing down, the previous nail holes are still there. If you didn't like this look, you could definitely run this through a planer, you could fill your holes to make it look fresh and new, but I love the character that this has and it's worked out perfectly for me. So this is called a vessel sink. Any type of sink that sits on top of your countertop is called a vessel sink. You could have like a bowl, you could have this rectangle like here. I got this off Amazon, it's great. I also got this oil rubbed bronze faucet off Amazon as well. It swivels, lots of power, and it comes with a kind of like a, a pop-up drain. Now I do have hard water and there's hard water stains in here. If you do have hard water, maybe look at getting a different finish besides oil rubbed bronze because the calcium and other minerals does kind of take its toll on oil rubbed bronze. All right guys, I drew up this little diagram right here for you on how to build your own DIY bathroom vanity with a vessel sink. Now let's get into it. This will be available on my website for a free download if you're looking to build something like this and you just need some instructions. All right, step one, you're gonna figure out what you're gonna use for your legs and you need to figure out the height, the length of your legs. Figure out your preferred finished height of the entire bathroom vanity. So the legs plus the countertop. Now, if you are gonna be using a vessel sink, factor in the height of the sink so it's not too high, so it's still gonna be comfortable enough for you when you're washing your hands. Old school countertops are between 30 and 32 inches, modern is 36. 
but hey, you're DIYing this, you're making it your own, do whatever is comfortable for you. So to get the length of your legs, you're gonna take the entire preferred height that you've decided on and subtract the depth of your countertop. So whatever you're gonna be using, if it's gonna be two inches, four inches, whatever. If you want it to be finished at 36 and your countertop is four inches thick, you're gonna cut your legs to 32. So for step two, we are going to attach some interior corner nailers. I don't know what they're called, but that's what we're gonna be calling them for now. Interior corner nailers on the top for your top apron. This piece right here and this piece right here is called apron. And then some nailers on the bottom if you're gonna be putting a shelf on the bottom. So for the little sides of your bottom shelf, we need to attach some nailers. Now I just use some scrap wood for this. So some of mine are two by twos, some of them are one by twos, but it's fine because the depth is the same. So you can use like two by two by fours that would work out perfectly. Now you're gonna attach your little interior corner nailers to your legs with some wood glue and some screws and then just stagger your screws so they don't conflict on the inside of the post. For step three, you're gonna attach all four of your apron pieces. And then I don't think these are called apron pieces since it's on the bottom, but these are just gonna be the sides to the bottom shelf. Now, the length of your front and back apron pieces and the sides is gonna depend upon what you're gonna be using for your countertop. If you're gonna be using like a stock countertop that you buy, then you're gonna to have to measure your apron pieces accordingly. If you're gonna be using wood planks, you're gonna to have to figure out the width of those and if you want an overhang on the front and back and on the sides. So this is going to vary. On the free downloadable PDF that I will have available on my website, I will have a cut list of all of the lengths and cuts that I did. So if you wanna replicate this exactly, you can. But for now, I'm just showing you that you have creative freedom and you can customize this to whatever size that fits your space and whatever materials that you're gonna be using. Now I attached my apron pieces and the bottom sides to the little interior corner nailers with wood glue and brad nails. Now this wood is really old since it is reclaimed and I didn't feel like that was gonna hold very well. So I did end up adding in some little metal corner braces and that made it way more sturdy and secure. So I would definitely do this, add them in if you feel that you need it. So for step four, you're gonna attach whatever it is that you're gonna be using for your countertop and for your shelf down here. I used boards. The top, I'm pretty sure are two by eights and for the bottom, I used one by sixes. And for the top, I nailed them down by hand with construction nails because I wanted kind of a more handmade look on the top and for the bottom I used brad nails and wood glue. Now for step five you have your entire vanity put together. Now you could stop here if you didn't want this to be a bathroom vanity. You could just use this as a table. You could customize it, use it as a little credenza. But if you're going to be using this to put a vessel sink in, you're going to want to drill your drain hole and you're going to want to drill your hole for your faucet for all of your piping. To get the diameters of the holes that you're gonna to need to drill for your faucet and your sink drain, reference your manuals that come with your products. For me, drilling the sink drain was really easy because it was right in the middle of my center board. Drilling the hole for the faucet was a little bit tricky because it was kind of close to the apron piece along the back. So I had to, I could do about half of it with the drill and then I had to chisel out the rest. So keep that in mind that you're gonna want your back apron piece to sit in far enough where you can drill a hole cleanly and not hit your apron piece. And now for step six, you're gonna install your vessel sink. Just use the instructions that come with it. They're super clear, it's great. And then install your faucet. And I'm not a plumber. I've never built one of these before, but it was super easy and I believe in you, you can do it too. And then obviously enjoy your new DIY vanity. And then again, this will be available on my website as a free PDF download so you can get to creating your own DIY vanity vessel sink combo. So for the bathroom hardware that I used in here, this towel bar I got off of Amazon, it's kind of that cast iron piping with the flange. And here is the little toilet paper holder. I think it's adorable. I like the contrast of the black on the white with the black and cream towel. I love this. I also got this matte black light fixture off of Amazon. It is definitely farmhousey with the exposed Edison bulbs, but it is not too farmhousey. You know what I mean? And then I picked up this little water closet sign from the Hearth and Hand line at Target, and it's so cute. I love it. One of my favorite things I got for this bathroom is this like powdered hand soap. It shakes them out. It kind of looks like salt, but as soon as it gets wet, 
it turns into soap. It's so cute and I love it. I hope you guys got some ideas out of this little bathroom that I renovated. If you're gonna renovate your own bathroom, let me know what you're gonna do in the comments below. And if you wanna see some more renovations, just subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss them. All right, I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.